Thank you. <laughs> Tonight, I'd like to tell you all about an opportunity. So it's a story, really, about an opportunity. I was thinking, hmm. Yeah, I was looking at them, and I was thinking, I've got my family, I have my profession, which I'm getting to, and what can we do? What can we do to make a better opportunity, do something fun? I'm going to be the mother of someone in the kindergarten through 12th grade school system for 18 years. Some of you, too? Yeah. So this is a great opportunity. Something wonderful can happen. My son there, Alexander, he's nine, and Cynthia is right now, she's four. And it was like light bulbs were going off over our heads. We knew that we could do something neat. I'm also a college professor, and I spend a lot of time in the office with, with them. Some of you are them. And we talk about science, and we're thinking about our future, and we're trying to connect what we're learning with our world. And so we thought to ourselves, all right, how are we going to connect family, school, um, our passion for doing something, and bring it all together in a wonderful situation? And this was really our moment of insight. And this involves um, bursting the bulb on many levels all the time. Now, um, science uh, live here has filled a need for the, the community. And right now I'm thinking, I want to tell you a story. So and I bring students into my lab, and we have questions like, what can we do, and how can we really see how this is going to work? So let me explain how this whole thing um, can work for us. A student will come into my office, and they'll say, Gee, uh, Dr. Schmidt, I'm having a hard time exactly understanding what a polymer is. I don't really understand what it is to be hydrophilic or hydrophobic. Or uh, what's an enzyme and how do those things work? And I'll say, hold on, have you ever played with a diaper? <laughs> now, a couple of you in here, I know I've said this too, and um, you look at me kind of funny, like you might be thinking that's sort of funny right now. And I say, wait, hold on, and I do actually have diapers in my office. And I say, all right, let's just rip off the side of it and uh, shake it out into a container. So we shake it all out into a container, and we see now that there's something called sodium polyacrylate. And this sodium polyacrylate is a polymer, and you might have been wondering exactly what a polymer was. A lot of lights here, and it really gets in there. And then I'll say, well, you know what? We can learn about what a polymer is, and we can learn what it means to be hydrophilic. We'll just add some water and play with this. And so we have all kinds of things in my office, and we have food coloring, and we like this uh, pink dye. So we'll add it in there, and we'll just swirl it up a little bit like that and make it all pretty. And then we'll add some um, water. And we just count to like five, like one, two, three, four, maybe five. And we are amazed. Look at that. That's what it means to be hydrophilic. That's what it means to go from being a um, individual units into a polymer. And we're feeling quite amazed, and now we're thinking, yeah, I'm starting to understand what it means to take little pieces together to make big pieces. Then I'll say, all right, you know, we were studying uh, things about enzymes yesterday in the lab. Did you really understand it? And maybe they did, but usually they really didn't. And I say, wait a minute, somewhere around here we've got um, a vase. So I go over, and sometimes I have a vase, sometimes it's just empty. Today it's a vase. And I say, hey, look at this. We can put this to much better use to explain what's going on here. And we've got hydrogen peroxide happens to be in there, since this is a teaching moment. And I say, you remember that was a substrate. We spent three hours in the lab on that. Do you remember that? I'm like, yeah, yeah, it was really hard. All right, well, it's not all that hard when you see that that substrate is going to break down. It's going to release energy. Remember, it's catabolic. Oh, yeah, breaking down, right, breaking down. And in my cup here, I have yeast mixed with water and a little bit of detergent just to make it beautiful for the camera. 
what's going to happen? Well, oh my, it is a catabolic reaction. It is exothermic. Exothermic means it's releasing heat. Oh my, look, it's going up 5 degrees. It's going to go up 10 degrees. By the time this thing is over, it's going to go up 15 degrees Celsius. Now do you kind of get what it means to be exothermic, catabolic, releasing energy, breaking down? Well, was this fun for you, I'll say? Oh, yeah, it was really fun. Well, how would you like to go into the community and share this with children, even my children? Would that be fun? They usually say yes. And I say, well, that's a great opportunity, and we're going to go do that. In fact, just the night before last, we did this. 43 of us did this for 500 members of the elementary school community where my children go to school. So we call this Science Alive. It's a chance to bring the expertise of faculty and the love of learning science and share it with the community. That is what we do. We have a lot of fun sharing science. Now, since this program has gotten started, um, over 300 university members have been involved in sharing science education with the public and with the elementary schools. We've had a tremendous amount of fun. This can work because children are such naturally curious scientists. But we've been doing this a while, so back about four years ago, my son and I were hanging out in the kitchen. Well, my husband was there, too, taking the picture and cleaning up. Because <laughs> I do science everywhere. <laughs> All the time. And um, anyway, we were getting the DNA out of onion juice. I really suggest you try it. If you've never tried this, this is a very fun thing. You have everything you need. Uh, if you have a living thing like onions, some alcohol, it's very easy to do. You can uh, ask me later. <laughs> and college students really need practice public speaking. And, you know, they need practice trying to explain difficult concepts in easy language, which is not always that easy to do. It's a great match. Curious child, excited college student, they all get together and make something really wonderful. Because science is really very exciting, especially in the second grade. And we see that college students, we have a lot of fun in the second grade, too, explaining these concepts. It's also vitally important that you take something that you're really interested in and share it with others. And we can really help the school system when we do this. Nothing's really that much more thrilling to me than when I show up at my child's elementary school and they've got a sign, Nova Sharks, you're welcome here, and uh, ma uh, science matters. Well, it's even better when you're studying matter. We studied all three states of matter that day. 
we got excited. We were, on the day we went to school to study plants, and here we are with the elementary school principal ready to go. We're excited, too, because we get to share this joy of what we like to do with the faculty at the school, and we get them excited, as well as getting ourselves um, excited and reaffirming that which we know we love to do. Also, the teachers they are able to share what they're doing at their conferences, just like we're able to share what we're doing at our conferences, too. We serve as role models, so not only are the faculty able to serve as more of a role model to our students, but our students are being role models to the elementary school children and all around. It's just making everybody feel really happy about what they're doing. We constantly get letters like this, maybe from kids that might have wanted to not do science, and they tell us, oh, science rocks, and I love science, and I want to be like you. And, you know, the other night, one of my students even took a photo of a note that the student wrote right there. You are the best teacher. It wasn't to me. It was to a college student. I was glowing in the background, so if you're here, you can know that. So in the end, this is a story about really having fun. All right. <laughs> I'm not done, but I'm really happy about that. <laughs> and sharing your um, passion for something. There's a marble in the bottom. Did you get it from the movie? Yeah, you know what's supposed to happen? Oh, no. We failed. The marble to the top by the power of friction. Friction! All right. Science Alive students in the back. <laughs> Looks like I seated the audience. And just sharing your profession. There's my colleague. He's a genetics researcher. He's holding the pipette with DNA dripping off the end for not his college class, but a group of, of students, uh, Boy and Girl Scout students. And we're doing this with the community. So in the end, this is a story of Science Alive where everyone has, is winning. But even more than just a story of me, one professor in my community, sharing my passion and my excitement in my profession. This is truly a call to action for each of us to truly think, what is your passion, something you're interested in? What is your profession, and how can you share it with the community in your way? Please do this. The world needs it. Thank you.